This is Dan Farisi, editor with Sound and Communications Magazine. Happy to be joined this afternoon by Melody Craigmile, Vice President of Marketing with Almo Pro AV. Thanks so much for joining me, Melody. Thanks for having me on the show today, Dan. The topic of conversation today is, of course, E4V, brand new thing coming out from Almo this fall. Very excited about it. Can't wait to take part in it myself. So my first question is, obviously, everyone knows E4. We've been going to these events for years. They're very successful. They just keep growing and growing and expanding. Obviously, in the age of COVID-19, things have had to change. We've become very familiar with virtual events. And I know there were virtual events under this banner in the spring. So how is E4V this fall going to be different from what people enjoyed and experienced in the spring? So we, we learned a lot from our experience in the spring and, um, you know, what we wanted to provide was more variety than we had previously. Um, we, we basically had a three day event and it was based on geography. So we had the same content running each of the three days, but to accommodate different different time zones. And we had some regionalization to the content. But um, what we found out is that people were really wanting more variety, more different, different topics that they can engage with. So uh, we literally have triple the amount of content. And Dan, this is going to be all original first run content. So it's not recycled webinars or anything else that we've done. This is all very timely uh, topics that are relevant to integrators today. Uh, everything from UCC, next generation workspaces, the future of meetings and events, pro audio. So there's six different solution centers and there's eight different classes, which are all going to be live. Um, and we're, we're very excited about the program for the fall. So can you go into some of the um, programs, some of the classes that you're most excited about? Uh, if someone is not going to be able to take part in everything, for example, what would you say are uh, number one, number two, number three on their must check out list? What would you really say just can't be missed? I would say there are two that come to mind immediately. One is, um, is next generation workspaces. You know, everybody's trying to understand how in a, in a post COVID world, how our workspace is going to be reconfigured and we have an amazing speaker named Kay Sargent who is a workplace designer with HOK, one of the largest architecture firms in the world. She also sits on the Avixa board and she's going to be describing what those new workplaces are going to look like. Um, so I think her insights are going to be very relevant to what integrators are going to be discussing with their corporate clients and, and, and going through what the needs of the workspace is. Um, and secondly, we have another um, solution center, which is the future of meetings and events. And as we all know, <laughs> things are transforming every day uh, about live events. And um, as a meeting planner myself, I've, I've been attending all sorts of different online conferences and things, just trying to understand how we can have meetings again in a safe environment, um, but be effective. And um, we have a great instructor, Tom Kerr, who, by the way, uh, was formerly with Avixa. He's gonna be joining Alma full-time as an instructor starting next week. So we're very excited to have him. And he's gonna be teaching this new course on the future of meetings and events. And of course, all of our classes are CTS certified. So we're, we're, we're very proud to partner with Avixa, um, providing these REUs and these great new classes. And that is obviously critical. That's something that's going to make these classes and programs even more appealing than they otherwise would be. Um, one question that I have is you had mentioned integrators several times, and that's obviously music to sound and communications ears. We target the integrator as much as we possibly can. We write for the integrator and the integrator channel. Is this really a program? Is E4V a program for integrators only? Do you expect to see some end user technology managers here? What about consultants, other people in the periphery or involved in the commercial AV industry who may not be integrators themselves? Yeah, it's, it's definitely for, for, you know, integrators, but also uh, in the spring, we had many, many end users join. We had consultants join. Um, so it's really an event, you know, for all of those different constituents. And again, with the three days of, of first original run content, there's kind of something for everybody, um, depending on, you know, where their interest lies. 
you mentioned that first run original content, which is of course very important not to have things just be repeated or regurgitated things you've seen before, but all fresh brand new content that's just targeted to that audience. Can you speak a bit to the importance of online learning in this era? Obviously, in the time of COVID-19, all of us have learned we can't be complacent, we can't rest on our laurels, we need to constantly be expanding our mindset, expanding our skills and our abilities. So talk about the importance of online learning when right now we can't really gather in classrooms so easily or in seminars. Yeah, Dan, I think it's, it's, it's very important. Uh, obviously, you're saying in the times that we're in now, but um, actually, um, Alamo's been doing online learning for 11 years with our webinar series. So we have a rich history of understanding, you know, how to deliver this content. Um, we're just augmenting it now with a much ro more robust platform with more content that people can engage with. Um, personally, I've been doing webinars for 20 years. Uh, so I have a, a, a deep background in online learning. Uh, I sat through a very interesting session uh, a couple weeks ago, and I learned that the first documented online event was in 1993. So this is not anything really new. It's just that people right. have been put in a situation where they have to engage with it more. And just like our live E4 events, you know, we pride ourselves on, you know, bringing the latest and the greatest to, um, to our audience, and, and that's what we're replicating here. Speaking of those live E4 events, I've been to a number myself. I always find them extremely informative as a media member, and I can only imagine as a, you know, a dealer, an integrator, et cetera. Um, what are your thoughts at this point on 2021 and the possibility of returning to live events? Is there any ability to speculate or is it just too uncertain since so much still remains undetermined? Well, I think, you know, we, we are hopeful, I will say, in returning to live events, but, um, I will say that I think in the future, many events, not just the E4 events, will become hybrid events. So for instance, mm -hmm. some people will attend live, some people will watch the live stream, um, they'll watch a virtual uh, tour of the exhibit hall um, just because they, they can't be there in person. So I think as people doing live events, we really have to start thinking, you know, how do we maximize um, of course, the expense and all the effort of doing live events where you maybe not be able to have as many people in a venue, but continue to bring that education to the industry. So um, we're, we're all looking at all of those options that we have for um, virtual events. And, and um, we, we actually just formed a partnership a couple months ago with a company named Art Media, who does um, uh, augmented reality holographic telepresence. So we can actually have, let's say, um, Sam Taylor, our executive vice president on the stage and have our CEO, Warren Chaikin, who's in Philadelphia, but they look like they're on the same stage and they can see the audience and they can respond in real time. So there's just multitude of possibilities that can, you can do to create a safe environment, bring people together, but realizing that our world has changed. He really underscored that one of the most important value propositions presented by E4V is going to be the education, the training, the ability to broaden one's mindset. I know having gone to E4 events in person in the past, sometimes Almo Pro EV would use it as an occasion to talk about new distribution partnerships or new bundles, different things available through the Almo Pro EV network. In addition to all the great education content, the RUs, is there going to be anything along those lines? Yeah, I mean, one of the, the, the most favorite things that people love about the E4 is seeing new, exciting products. And um, within each solution center, which is a very curated experience for the user, um, we don't have any booths that people are just clicking around, downloading PDFs that you can find anywhere on the web. You know, once you take the UCC class, you can go into the UCC solution center and learn about new products and hear from subject matter experts. So, you know, we are really working with our partners to bring the best, newest technology. Um, there'll be videos, there'll be other information that people can consume. But again, it's all very contextualized into a great user experience. 
So hopefully in you know, over the last 10 minutes, we kind of whetted people's appetites, gotten them excited to take part in E4V. So assuming that that's the case, how can people get registered, get signed up? Where can they go? Um, what are the specifics they need to know to say, well, I want to do this. Now, what do I do? Yeah, it's, re it's really simple. Thanks, thanks to all of our, our sponsors. This is a, a completely free event. Uh, you can register at www.e4evolution.com. It all kicks off on October 27th, 28th, and 29th. And then Dan will have a bonus week where if somebody missed a session, we'll have them recorded and they can go back and watch all of that content. Um, if you attend live, you can get the CTS renewal unit. If you attend um, asynchronously, you will have to take a quiz um, because you can still earn that RU. Um, it's going to be up to 14 RUs for this particular event. And it'll all be there for the whole week. And then once that week is over, it's done. And we get ready for the next one in the spring. And can you give us uh, any insights about what that might be? Or do you want to just focus on fall for now? We're going to focus on fall event. for now. I mean, we, we again, you know, we, we are hopeful to be able to have live events in the spring. Um, but, you know, we will, we will continue to monitor. Our first one would presumably be Chicago, but, um, you know, we are beholden to the, the, the governor of Illinois and the state and local regulations of how many people we can have. And uh, it's just too far out to say now, but um, we miss seeing our customers in person, but this is the next best thing. And, and we're, we're glad that we can expand beyond the geographical boundaries of one city and, and one day into this uh, online virtual platform. Right, and, and for a next best thing, as you say, it's a very, very strong offering. As I say, I know I'm certainly gonna be part of it and I'll just reiterate, I know I'm repeating myself, in these times, you know, it, it's not like uh, the economy is soaring. It's not like money is just going to be flying into people's pockets. We really need to boost our training, boost our education, know what's going on, listen to the thought leaders in the industry. I think the kind of education sessions, the training, the networking, the opportunities that E4V is going to provide is invaluable. I mean, the tough times is when we need to up our game, not during the good times. So um, I really encourage everyone to take part. Well, thanks, Dan. And, and I think people that take the time to invest in themselves from a professional development standpoint, you know, those are going to be the people that are, are going to bring the new solutions to their end users and, and be the most well-educated and informed to, to add value to what they're, at what they're doing and will be doing in the future. Well, thank you very much, Melody, for taking time to inform Sound and Communications readers and our digital audience about this. Again, make sure you check out Almo Pro AVs E4 coming up at the E4V coming up at the end of October. Any other thoughts you'd like to share with our audience? No, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, really hope your re readers can can join us. It truly is going to be an industry event. Um, with some of the the best instructors in the industry. So check it out at e4evolution.com. Thank you very much, Melody. This has been Dan Farisi, editor with Sound and Communications Magazine, speaking to Melody Craigmile, Vice President of Marketing with Almo Pro AV. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dan.